Hi, it's Claudia from Create with Claudia. Thank you so much for stopping by today. I'm going to do something really fun today. I'm excited about it. This is our 10th project as an Island Batik Ambassador. This year, 2021, I was lucky enough to be chosen as one of the 24 Island Batik Ambassadors. And each month we have a special project. And this month it's all about the Orophil Color Builders, the 2021 Endangered Species Color Builders. I was lucky enough to get the Blue-Throated Macaw. It's a set of three really gorgeous sort of uh, bluish green threads. They're 40 weight and they're the large spools. And I and we were all tasked, all of us got different thread combinations. I think there were 12 this year in their in their color builder selection or sec, um, excuse me, in their color builder uh, program. So before we get started, I want to tell you, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my project and then I'm actually going to show you how I did it and we're going to make a little flower later in the video. Uh, but for right now, if you wouldn't mind, I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button. I always love new subscribers. Thank you so much. I am on social media at Create with Claudia, where I post things daily, all sorts of pictures and things like that. My website is www.createwithclaudia, and I also will have a companion blog post uh, for this video as well. So when I saw the uh, list of things uh, that the Island Batik Ambassadors, the monthly projects for each, uh, each month for the ambassadors this year, I immediately saw a couple. I saw the purse that we made last month, and then I saw in October we were doing thread painting. And right away, uh-oh, I'm not a thread painter. I, I mean, I you know, stitch and I quilt with thread and things like that, but I don't do that real intricate, beautiful sort of free motion quilting work. I really like straight line quilting, and I do some sort of gentle curves, but nothing really curly cue. I love it, but I'm just, that's not my, uh, that's not my forte. I'd love to work on that more. So right away, I thought, uh-oh, what am I going to do for that? And then when I saw these gorgeous threads, um, they were very inspiring, as well as the blue throat of macaw, which is the animal that I got. So I thought, and I thought, and I thought, what am I going to do? I, did, I sort of was, I was pretty nervous about this one. I think of all of them, I was most nervous. Of all the challenges for the year, this is the one I was most nervous about. But I decided I really do speak my art. I love to work with fabrics. So I thought I'm going to highlight those, but then I'm going to accentuate them with all those gorgeous threads from Aurafil. And that's what I did. First thing I did is I sketched out a blue throat of macaw. I went online and looked at all the different sites, lots of pictures of just all kinds of things. And I came up with a composite. This is my original drawing. As you can see, I'm not an artist. I don't sketch real well or anything like that. But um, Hey, I gave it my best shot, and I wanted him perched on a branch, and I wanted him set in um, uh, in the forest, so that, just to show, you know, before any poachers got to him, because I think when I was reading online, and my blog post goes into this more, as of, I think it's 2019, there were only three to 400 blue-throated macaws left in the wild. They are only found in northern Bolivia, so they have a very small area, and they feed off of, I believe it's the dead palm dates or the palm nuts from uh, uh, up in the trees. So again, their habitat is, get, is diminishing. There are some pres uh, reserves that have been set up, but it, it definitely, I mean, with only 300 to 400 left in, uh, in, in the wild, excuse me, they, um, uh, hopefully they will never become extinct. So this is what I came up with, and again, I call him Clyde. This is Clyde. <laughs> Lots of fun. I just, I, I don't know, I'm sort of in love with Clyde. Number one, I'm really proud that I was able to do this. I think, I think he looks pretty good. Um, and again, I'm not an artist, not like this, uh, you know, freeform artist like this. To stitch this up, I used some really gentle stitching on the feather area, and I may put up some pictures as well, and I sort of gentle curves to mimic that feather shape. And then I used real straight line quilting in all of the, the, um, the foliage and the, in the trees and things like that, because I wanted to just have some sharp angular uh, shapes sort of surrounding the softer bird. Along with the three color builders from the uh, Orophil Endangered Species set, I also used their gray smoke, and I used that in his beak and in his claws. And then for the yellow and for the um, for the branch, I used their butter, which is a gorgeous sort of soft yellowy tan color. Thank you so much to Orophil for uh, being one of the uh, product sponsors for this month's Island Batik Ambassador Project. Thank you also to Island Batik for the fabrics over the year and for the fabrics using uh, in, in this project. Also, and you'll see that later, in the for the batting for this, I actually used Hobbs Fusible, which works out really well with a 
with uh, the method that I used. So, and that also was part of my Island Boutique Ambassador box back in July. So thank you to Hobbs Batting. And then as usual, I love using Schmetz needles. I used Microtex on this project and that's always in my machine. So thank you to Schmetz as well. So stick around. I can't wait to show you how I made a collage. We're going to make a little flower together and I hope you enjoy it. So here again is Clyde. So I'm going to show you how to make something similar. We're just going to make a small little flower. It's a really easy process. And um, I'm going to tell you what we need. The first thing, of course, is you're going to need uh, scissors. You're going to need lots of pins because of the way I do this. I don't use any glue. You're going to need one piece of backing fabric and I used just a solid gray from Island Boutique Solids lines. If you never use Island Boutique Solids, um, you're going to love them. They're real, the set color is really saturated and they're just a really nice texture. They have a real nice hand to them. I'm also going to use some fusible batting. This is that Hobbs fusible batting, just a little piece. I had some left over from a project I did. And then you're going to need lots of fabric scrap, scraps, excuse me first thing you're going to do is lay down your fabric. I just have a small piece of uh, this background fabric and you're going to press it. Make sure it's pressed. You want to cut it a little bit larger than your finished product project size. So Clyde's about 20 inches or 21 inches. I can't remember exactly which. So I cut the background fabric I think about 22 or 23 inches because there'll be some shrinkage when you're sewing and then if you want to you know square it up after you're done you want a little wiggle room in there. Then you're going to lay on top that fusible batting and you don't have to use fusible batting. I just had some left over from my project and Hobbs had given it to us. It's, it works really well with this since I don't use glue to glue down my shapes. I'll show you how I do do that. Um, since I don't use glue, this actually gives it a little bit more uh, stability when I'm taking it over to the sewing machine. So the next thing you're going to do is start painting and that's the fun part. Um, so I get my scissors. You want a nice pair of sharp scissors. I hope these are sharp enough. Now I don't want, I mean, you can do one solid background or just, you know, a couple pieces like that. So I'm using sort of greenish blues, these teals as my background, but I want to use a lot of smaller pieces. So I'm just going to cut, and I like that angular background, and you're just going to lay it, you're going to cover up that, excuse me, that fusible batting. I like that color. We'll just cut a few more pieces like that. Here's a piece of that teal. You want to overlap. I do actually, I did quite a few layers on the green. Let's see. Just have fun with it. Remember, you're going to square this all up, so don't worry about the outside so much. I mean, usually I love, if you know my projects, you know that I do mostly just, I love sort of straight line geometric piecing. So this, this was very liberating for me. Um, and I'm going to do this again. I'm not sure. I'm doing it right now, but I'm not sure. I might do some other projects too, because it was just lots of fun. Let's see. And I don't have quite enough, but we're going to cover that up anyway. So there you go. There's the background. You can see it sort of building up there. And I decided I'm going to go with a purple flower. So for the flower petals, I'm just going to cut out sort of ovals. These are all just scraps I used. I did not use any fabric. I didn't cut into any of my stash. I just, I have scrap bins and I have one dedicated just to Island Batik fabrics. So we're just going to do a purple flower. So you just cut out those petal leaves. So there's my little flower. It's just a little tropical flower. I don't know what kind of flower it is. Um, I laid out all the petals. It was just cut them out whatever shape you wanted. And then for the center, I'm going to use one of these, this gold. So the next thing you're going to do, once that's all set and you're happy with the way it is, and I don't know if I said this at the beginning, you don't, this project does not lend itself well to a really big canvas. Uh, I believe Clyde is about... 
I think it's, if I look back, I think it's about 20 inches. That's about as big as I would go because, whoops, see, you can see how the, the, the fabric starts shifting when you're messing around with it like I just shouldn't have done. So the next thing I would do is I would take this over and press it down because I have that fusible batting. Be really careful though because all these pieces are loose and I haven't tacked them down yet and I will show you that in a minute. But right now I'm going to take this over to my ironing surface and try and get as much as I can fused down before I go to the next step. Okay, so I'm back. By no means is this secure yet. It just is a little bit on the background and you can see where things shift even when you're ironing. You gotta really watch. So then what you take is I have this, it's water soluble uh, stabilizer. And what I would do then is I cover it. So I cut a piece big enough for my, a little bit bigger even, for my um, collage and I put it on top and then it's up to you. I would highly recommend pinning. I pinned Clyde when I made Clyde, I pinned a lot. And this one I will too, because you want to hold down and you want to pin carefully. You want to you want to get all those pieces of fabric and I do it on a hard surface and I, while I'm doing it, I make sure nothing is shifting too much because things will shift. I'm warning you of that right now and that's why a bigger piece probably wouldn't be your best bet on this type of project. So you're going to pin all the way around and you pin very liberally. So when you're sewing you have to really watch out for the pin. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this and then I'll show you what I do next. Alrighty, so this has all been pinned down. As you can see, I use a lot of pins. I might even put one more here because it definitely shifts when you take it over to the sewing machine. And this is where the fun goes in. And if you're like an expert and do love free motion, you can just go to town on this. Just really, really, really watch out for those pins. I have had, I actually had my one machine in the shop a little while ago because of a pin incident. So um, now I'm just going to do straight lines across this. I might try to do some soft lines in uh, on the flower and I'm going to use that medium color from the Aurifil color builder set, the blue throated macaw color builder set I got. After you've done a few passes over the whole thing, you can take away, all the pins go away. Once I pin, sew over one pin, I go ahead and take it out. So it, it, they go away quickly. It's just those first couple passes, I will warn you, um, just look out for those pins. Okay, so here I am over at my machine. I'm just going to carefully uh, move this over. I'm actually going to do the center, the flower first, uh, the, the, that gold, the, the gold uh, thread in the middle first. Excuse me, gold fabric in the middle first. And then you want to pin, pull out those pins. Watch out for those pins. The nice thing about a collage like this is you, you don't have to be perfect on it. And then I'm just going to show you how this looks. The other thing is you're going to do a lot of trimming now and at the end because there's lots of threads. So there is the um, the uh, the center of the flower. And then I'm now I'm just going to work on the uh, petals. I sort of work my way out from the center, and that's what I did with uh, the bird with Clyde. So I'm just going to finish this up. I'm going to do the flower, and I'll show you how that looks, and then we'll do the outside. Alright, so hopefully you can see a little bit of that flower. You can see I just sort of edged the petals very, uh, just sort of casually did that. I, I didn't follow any specific pattern or anything. I just went around the outside of the edges to make uh, sort of that blue flower like that. But now I'm going to go ahead and do the background and just do sort of some straight stitching. And when I come back, you'll see that uh, and how this turned out.
All right, so I brought it over to the, from the machine. I'm all finished. I did some sort of just straight stitching all around the outside. I might add just one little stitch right there. I'm just seeing it right now. It's bugging me. Um, I just sort of did haphazard, just straight lines all around. Hopefully you can see that okay. It's kind of hard with the, the light shining off of it. And I did the flower like that. The next thing you need to do is follow your manufacturer's instructions for your water-soluble stabilizer to remove it. And mine is uh, dip, rubbing it or dipping it with uh, wet water. I, wet. Dipping it in water. Not, <laughs> it's Naturally, it's wet. Um, let me move these pins, and then I'll show you how I did that. Okay, so I brought over. You want to protect your water. I just have a little bowl of water here, and I have a wash rag. And actually, I'm going to lay down this towel. And again, you'll want to follow your manufacturer's instructions for whatever kind of water-soluble um, uh, uh, water soluble stabilizer you have. But in my case, what I do is I just dipped it in water because it is a lot of it. And you it gets a little gummy when it gets wet. And you'll just, I just, and it gets messy. So you might want to do this. I did my big Clyde. I did that in the restroom. I actually did it in my bathtub. And you just start gently. You want to be real gentle with it because you don't want to tear off and mess up any uh, areas that you might have missed. I'm probably just going to dip this in. You can see how it's already starting to come off. It will get your piece wet. I mean, you know, that's the way it goes. And I just sort of gently rub it off. And then you're going to lay it on a towel. I might just wipe off a little bit on a flat surface, just real gently. You want to be really gentle with this step. You're going to tear out that stitching. What you're going to do is you're going to set it aside, let it dry overnight, maybe sop up a little bit more of that water from the batting. And once it's dry, you'll see it, it lightens up a lot and it shrinks up a little bit. And then what you'll do, and I, because this is wet, I'm not going to show you, um, you're going to take a ruler and trim it to whatever size you want. I'll just trim off the edges here and then you bind it like you want and there you have your little collage. So here once again I am, I'm going to show you Clyde one more time. This is Clyde and then the other little flower is actually drying right now. Uh, by the time I publish this video I'll have a picture up of it too. Turned out really nicely. I'm, I can't wait to show you when it's dry and you see those purples really come out and the light blues in the background. Thank you once again to Island Batik to Aurafil Threads for those gorgeous endangered species color builder uh, collections that all of the ambassadors uh, got. There are 24 ambassadors, and by the way, I should mention that. Um, you should go check them all out. I have a link to all of their blogs in my, uh, to, in my blog post on my website. The projects that they came up with in this challenge are just incredible. Um, just and everybody got well a few of us maybe two or three of us got the same threads but it's just so interesting to see all the different interpretations and all of the beautiful thread work that that the ambassadors came up with so I highly encourage you to head over to my uh, blog post and at the bottom of that article are links to all of the the ambassadors and their projects thanks so much for watching have a great day